broken hip motor Luna right side. Let's tear it apart. Remove four screws, separate plastic cover. Transmission free turning, broken motor. Let's take the brackets apart. This bracket helps the sensor know position of leg. This bracket, the flat side that helps the sensor know the position of the leg. Underneath is flat on one side. This flat part when assembled on the right side faces towards the free rolling wheel. It aligns with and meshes with the flat part of this sensor, rotating sensor resistor. So you would place it facing forward and you make this guy fit in it. Let's continue dissecting this thing. Next you undo and move out of the way the drive wheel for the right side power cord. It's a four conductor black small flat connector. Now I'm going to take the sensor bracket two screws that hold it and I'm going to take it out the way. I'm trying to free up this motor so I can work on this sensor position sensor rotating rotating resistor on the bottom of the bracket there is a tab it tells you which way this PCB board has to face. The tab goes into this very small hole on the plastic motor bracket and it faces forward this guy has a tab facing forward towards the free rolling wheel that will position your rotating sensor correctly. Let's undo the four screws on the plastic motor bracket for the hip. This is the right hip we're working on. On this Luna, the plastic bracket that holds the hip motor in place is held together by four longer black screws. I've noticed as I pull these apart they have different screws on different models. I don't know if it comes from the factory or somebody's worked on it before, but on this robot, on this right hip, they use these longer screws to hold that plastic motor mount down. The DC motor on this Luna has a red-black lead that ends up at the motor mount on this circuit board plug here. To feed this guy in and out, I'm going to use string to pull in and pull out. That way I can retrieve my leads in and out of the chassis. Okay, I'm going to continue with the deassembling. I've got to take this gear off. So I'm going to find a nut driver and go from there. Five and a half millimeter. And I'll have to hold it still, break it free. So let's see how it goes. Don't lose these little screws. They're the size of some watch case screws. You can find them maybe at a jewelry repair store. I'm trying to figure out exactly what size, dimension, length, width, and pitch. So I can have some spares because I continue to lose them with my big old finger. Don't see as good as I used to at 72. Okay, I'm going to desolder this guy, the lead from this guy, and build my next motor to fit. We'll go from there. Okay, I've noticed with the motors, this is the original motor's threaded shaft. I can't find any more threaded shaft motors. And the position of this gear when it's inserted on here is uh, probably less than a millimeter between the collar and the metal casing. My new motors have a flat shaft, but they have an offset. I'm going to have to file that down. Show you what I'm talking about. You can see that that's probably two and a half millimeters. So I'm going to have to file that and let it, this gear get closer to this cluster transmission. 
I'll do that and then show you the result. That did it. Okay, I need to fill up my gap here before I put a pin in it. So the washer. Each motor has a plus and a minus side. So that you know which way to place the capacitor, check rotation, and put the lead solder to it. Okay, new motor, new capacitor. Okay, now to solder the lead removed from the old motor to the new motor. Again, keep polarity. That's the plus sign right there to the left. Red wire plus. Okay, we're going to pull the lead back through the chassis. I'm going to use my string again. Everybody has ideas, hooks, wire, pieces of solder. Whatever you do with your hands to get your stuff to work. Don't be afraid to try. You never try, you never succeed. I believe I'm going to put them, I don't want these wires to be pinched between this plastic mount. Motor mount screws. Okay, time for gear, shims, and keeper pin. Okay, three shims, one washer. Put it in place. Everything is secured. Now this guy has a tab. The tab on this motor mount locking this guy down. It will drop flat when you have it in positioned in the right place. So let's find our position. Okay, found that this guy locks flat with tab in position the sprocket going towards the drive wheel facing down and back none of my wires are in bind so I'm going to go ahead and use my longer black screws to hold this plastic hip motor mount down motor mount screws motor tracking next to be position sensor this guy tab on this side tab on this so tab around the quarter sensor Go toward front trailing wheel. Let's get that done. Okay, position sensor is set up, and I'm going to preset the flat port towards the rotating or the floating front wheel. This bracket is to orientate the uh, hip position. It has a flat side on it here that faces forward, and it sets and rests in here, flat side to flat side more explaining than it needs but just so you know okay this is the motor lead this is the 
charger port ground, the black lead, charger port black lead, plugs in here. Positive, negative, right hip motor, left hip motor. Plug in, right drive motor lead. Right side cover. Okay, the right side is reassembled. Everything works fine. I repeated this process on the left side. I now have two modified N30 motors. They turn at 30 RPM instead of 100 RPM, but they seem to be working fine in these lunar robots. So these seem to be a suitable substitute for the original Luna N30 hip motors. Let's see if this guy can move. Okay. Success. Hello, Luna. Do you like your new hips? Okay. My day is fine. And that's the end of this video. Success. Making a video. Luna Hip Motors. Sorry, I didn't hear you clearly. I bet you didn't. Goodbye.